Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, we're making the easiest, so good, cheese apple butter danishes. They sound more complicated than they really are. <laughs> um, they are fantastic. I love a cheese danish. I love any kind of cheese danish, but couple that with really good homemade chunky apple butter, and we are in heaven. Yesterday, I went ahead and made a fresh batch of apple butter, as I do around this time of year. I'll typically make about one every two weeks or so, just to have on hand. And I knew that I wanted some leftover to make this recipe today, so we're gonna get right into it. I've got the oven preheated to 400, a baking sheet ready with parchment paper. You will need store-bought puff pastry because I'm good at a lot of things, but I am not gonna make my own puff pastry because it's just time consuming and I'm not gonna to do that. Then you'll need cream cheese, egg yolks, an egg wash, sugar, vanilla, really, really good apple butter, um, and a little bit of water. That's literally all you need and it is phenomenal every single time. Like I said, the apple butter, I made it yesterday and just look at the color of my apple butter, okay? It's rich, it's delicious. I already have a recipe on lauraindekitchen.com for apple butter and the link for that for the website is down below and you can go, just go to the search tool and just literally search apple butter and it will come up. The only difference is I didn't make mine in my crock pot. I just made it stove top and it cooked for a couple hours. So easy peasy. Let's go ahead and make the cream cheese filling, which is so simple and so easy. You're obviously gonna need some cream cheese. Um, you wanna make sure it's somewhat softened um, to room temperature so that it's easy to work with. And to that, you're going to add a couple of egg yolks. It's still a little bit stiff, but it is so fine. Do not panic. And you will need some sugar and you will need some vanilla. I'm not gonna add any cinnamon. I'm not adding any spices because there's so much of that going on in the apple butter, but otherwise it would be almost perfumey. It would be so overpowering and I don't wanna do that. I want everything to kind of shine. And now I'm going to gently and patiently, I might switch to a whisk, whisk, and mix all of this together. I forgot to mention that I also went ahead, went ahead and added a small pinch of salt. Salt is crucial in desserts, just like it is in savory dishes, and it does exactly the same thing in sweets that it does in savory. It just kind of makes everything come alive and, and the flavor really burst, and that is done. That part is done. So we have the filling because the filling is made up of that and the apple butter. So it's easy, easy, easy. Make sure that your puff pastry comes out to room temperature just so that it's pliable, but do not leave it to room temperature too long. Otherwise, it will just become a really gummy mess. I just sprinkled flour in my water, but that's okay. Gently grab your puff pastry. I'm going to roll it out so that it's just like an inch or so bigger on all four sides. Okay, and now you're just gonna cut this, take off any excess flour, into four as equal as you can manage, which I'm not really good at that, but that's okay. And then you'll take a dollop of the cream cheese filling which looks like a lot, but if, I'm, if some of it just kind of spills out, it's totally fine. But these will puff up and you'll get some room for all of your filling. So do not worry, it should be just fine. And then you do a dollop of the apple butter and together, oh my goodness gracious. And if you've never topped yogurt with apple butter and then sprinkled with some granola, then let me tell you something. You're really just not in the market. I'm just gonna put a little bit more filling because I can see that I just need a tiniest bit more. I can just tell, you know what I'm saying? I can just tell. But if you're not putting apple butter on your yogurt and then topping it with granola, then I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're not living. Take some water, run it around the edges, just a little, really don't need to really don't need to, but it's just a habit. And then you're just gonna take four corners and pinch. And then you're gonna do, you can leave them like this, okay? Uh, which you can. I like to make little pockets like that. 
for some reason, I just find them to be better and they hold the filling better, uh, but that's really totally up to you. I'm just gonna go ahead and roll the rest of it out. I will then pop these into the freezer for like 10 minutes. Uh, I want the puff pastry to be really cold so that it gets really flaky. Um, and then we will do an egg wash and pop them into the oven. Okay, these were in the freezer for about, I don't know, I think closer to 15 minutes, but who really is counting, huh? I'm just gonna go ahead and give them a good brushing with some egg wash, which is just one egg beaten with the tiniest bit of water or milk or whatever. Just give it a good brush. This kind of helps make everything a gorgeous golden brown color. And then once we do that, I'll show you. We're gonna sprinkle it with just a little teeny tiny bit of sugar. You could use like raw demerara sugar, um, coarse sugar, or just regular sugar. Again, I don't do any additional spices because that apple butter has so much of it that I don't want it to seem perfumey, but you could add a small pinch of cinnamon to the sugar if you wanted to when you make, when you top it. And that's it. These are just gonna go into a preheated oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they are a beautiful, gorgeous golden brown color. And I'll show you what they look like when they are done. These danishes were baking for about 25 minutes and I just want you to look at how beautiful they are. As they were baking, they get puffy, a deeply golden brown. They're just fantastic. If you pinch the sides really well together, they don't open, but if some do just a little bit, do not panic, nothing oozes out. It kind of all stays intact. Um, and I told you the filling looked like a lot, but I told you it was gonna stay in there. Um, and I'm just like really giddy and I'm really excited. <laughs> you do need a dusting of powdered sugar, uh, just cause you do. And you might want to just put powdered sugar in the actual container, but you know, but look at them. They're so good. They're flaky. They're phenomenal. There's a lot of scent from the apple butter. My mouth is watering. The bottom is a really lovely golden brown color. I, every time I eat cheese dishes, I think about the time I went to Vegas with my husband and our best friends like over a decade ago and we sit at the Palagio and there was a, a bakery. I don't know if it's still there. I haven't been there in a long time, but if it is, and any of you know, let me know down below. There's a bakery there and every single morning, Jamie and I went downstairs to get cheese danishes and we were obsessed. <laughs> so every time I make danishes, that's what I think of. Oh, mm. mm hmm If you can imagine apple pie in a cheese danish, that is what these taste like. Yeah, you know, perfection. It's really hot though. Perfection. Flaky, sweet but not too sweet. Everything I love. Go to lauraindthekitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.